Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include European Union warns of winter gas shortages after Ukraine talks fail. And from ferrets to fish, new EU laws that are ruining Britain. UK could make its way in the world outside the EU. And why Europe's austerity experiment is doomed to fail. Plus, 500,000 foot path cash at centre of anti-fraud investigation by the EU. It's Wednesday, 9th of July. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, the top story from our homepage. European Union warns of winter gas shortages after Ukraine talks fail. European Union Energy Commissioner Gunther Ottinger warned on Monday that the bloc may face gas shortages this winter after Russia cut supplies to Ukraine following the collapse of talks. The next weeks will not be a problem, but we will receive our gas volumes, Ottinger said in Vienna, cautioning that if the Ukraine uses its reserves, then we would have a problem with a cold winter. Ukraine, like other countries, holds gas stockpiles it can tap to ensure gas continues to flow to Gazprom customers in the EU, even if there are problems with supplies from Russia. But Ukraine could, as it has during previous disputes, also tap these reserves and use the gas for its own needs, potentially threatening supplies to the EU. The nation of 46 million people receives half its gas from Russia and transports 15% of the fuel consumed in Europe. From ferrets to fish, new EU laws that are ruining Britain. European Union meddlers have forced the UK to make more than 150 changes to laws ranging from ferrets welfare, how fish is labelled, to checks on air conditioning units. The legislation, which was rubber stamped by a powerless parliament in Westminster, shows how the EU's tentacles reach into every aspect of our lives, from medicines to housing and transport, and from energy to legal systems. There was outrage at the revelations which were obtained under the Freedom of Information Act. Tory MP Peter Bone said, We cannot do anything about this legislation. We cannot amend it. We are powerless to stop it. It's fundamentally undemocratic. Mr Bone went on to say, If we want to be a self-governing nation again, we have to come out of the EU. UK could make its way in the world outside the EU. Now, I've been appalled by the tone of the debate on the UK's continued membership of the European Union. One side is blatantly emotional, activistic and parochial. It holds the opposing viewpoint in intellectual contempt. Its public pronouncements frequently employ words such as mad, unthinkable and stupid. I refer, of course, to the side that wants the UK to remain part of the EU, come what may. And this is particularly regrettable because this is one of the biggest decisions that the UK has ever faced. Why Europe's austerity experiment is doomed to fail. I've spent the past two weeks in Europe with speaking engagements in Italy, Greece and Austria. This was my first visit to Greece and my first chance to get an admittedly superficial tourist's view of what a country with great depression levels of unemployment looks like. Now, it didn't look anything in particular until the drive from Athens, Greece's capital and largest city, to Thessaloniki, its second largest. And then it struck me. The roads were near empty. My host, Nikos, reckons he has done a million kilometres over the years on this 500 kilometre drive, and he confirmed that roads which were now virtually empty were once full of cars and especially trucks, that mobile sign of a thriving economy. This is a very different manifestation of economic stagnation than the mental picture I had from the historical records of the Great Depression. A 500,000 footpath cash at centre of anti-fraud investigation by the EU. European Union anti-fraud investigators have been alerted in relation to 500,000 
euros in suspected irregular payments at one of the country's leader companies. Officials in the Department of the Environment have expressed deep concern at the scale of the suspected fraud involving the taxpayer-funded Neath partnership. Environmental Minister Phil Hogan directed his officials to take control of hundreds of company files which may now be referred to the Garda. The Irish Independent has learned that installation of 200,000 euros worth of footpaths in the tiny village of Monoyalty is at the centre of the department's probe. In findings that are understood to have alarmed Mr Hogan, department officials found that Neath Partnership appeared to have created a document aimed at assisting Monoyalty tidy towns in drawing down €150,000 from the European Agricultural Fund for Rural Development. The probe concluded that the EU funding was sought for a project that had already been funded by the local authority. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon.